We are now going to discuss properties of trigonometric functions. The first set of properties we will discuss would be the periodic properties. And what this tells us is how often trig functions repeat themselves. We've already kind of discussed previously that every 360 degrees, every trig function repeats itself. And what this periodic property is telling us is that if you take an angle and you add 2 pi to it, or 360 degrees, then it doesn't change the value of the trig expression at all. That goes for sine, cosine, cosecant, and secant. Tangent we can do a little bit better than that. Tangent actually repeats itself every pi radians or every 180 degrees. Tangent and cotangent the two trig functions that are reciprocals of each other repeat themselves every 180 degrees or every pi radians. We are now going to use these periodic properties to evaluate trig expressions. In our first example I have sine of 17 pi over 4 which is 4 point something pi. So I need to get this down to an angle that is between 0 and 2 pi because then I can locate the reference angle if needed and evaluate the trig expression. So 17 pi over 4 I'm going to take away 2 pi because that is how often the sine function repeats itself every 2 pi radians. <clears throat> Common denominator so you'll take 17 pi over 4 and you will take away 8 pi over 4. I had to convert 2 pi into 8 pi over 4. <clears throat> this actually is going to give me 9 pi over 4, which is still greater than 2 pi. I need to be between 0 and 2 pi. So, well, how about we take 9 pi over 4 now, and we take away 2 pi again, which we already know is equal to 8 pi over 4. And this is actually going to give me the angle pi over 4. So sine of 17 pi over 4 is actually the exact same thing as saying sine of pi over 4. And remember what we discussed previously, pi over 4, well that's just 45 degrees. So all I'm doing is finding sine of 45 degrees. The angle is already in quadrant 1, so I don't have to worry about finding a reference angle and worrying about is my answer positive or negative. All trig functions are positive in quadrant 1. So I'll draw our triangle. So draw us a nice triangle here. It has to be a 45, 45, 90 triangle. label the sides, 1, 1, square root of 2. Remember, square root of 2 always goes across from the 90 degree angle. Sine of 45 degrees is opposite over hypotenuse. So go to any 45 degree angle, the side opposite is 1, the hypotenuse is square root of 2. So you have 1 over square root of 2. You have to rationalize because you do have a radical in the denominator. So multiply by square root of 2 over itself and you have square root of 2 over 2 as your final answer here. So all I did here was I took away <coughs> increments of 2 pi until I got to a final angle measure that was between 0 and 2 pi, 0 and 360 degrees. Another example, cotangent of 405 degrees. So cotangent, how often does cotangent repeat itself? Well, this one's every 180 degrees. So I'm going to take away 180 degrees from 405, and I'm actually going to get 225 degrees. <clears throat> we can actually take away 180 degrees again. So remember, cotangent repeats itself every 180 degrees. So now, this is going to give us cotangent of Oh, 45 degrees. Now, you just need to evaluate cotangent of 45 degrees. 
Now, keep in mind that if you were to keep 225 degrees, which is a quadrant three angle, you would have had to have found the reference angle by taking away 180 degrees, which would have then given you the reference angle of 45 degrees. But it doesn't matter if you're in quadrant one or if you're in quadrant three, we're gonna have a positive answer either way. <clears throat> so cotangent of 45 degrees. Let's make our 45, 45, 90 triangle. <clears throat> so one, one, square root of two, cotangent. Remember, cotangent is the reciprocal of tan. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So cotangent has got to be adjacent over opposite. Not that it really matters because adjacent side is one, opposite is one. So you get one over one, which is one. Positive one is your answer. So we previously discussed in the last video the signs of trigonometric functions based on what quadrant the original angle is in. So remember the quadrant of an angle <clears throat> determines if the value of the trig function or trig expression is positive or negative. So the quadrant of the angle determines the sign of that trig expression. <clears throat> remember the phrase all students take calculus. All means in quadrant one all of the trig functions are positive. Students quadrant two that means sine and its inverse cosecant are positive. Quadrant three tangent and its inverse cotangent are positive. Everything else is negative. In quadrant four cosine and its inverse secant are both positive. Everything else is negative. So let's use this to answer a few questions. <clears throat> We're going to name the quadrant where each angle theta lies. So I'm going to draw my little visual over here all students take calculus. <laughs> Alright, so they tell me that find out what quadrant theta is in given that tan theta is positive and cosine theta is negative. Greater than zero is positive, less than zero is negative. Alright, so where is tangent positive? Well guess what? That would have to be in quadrant one because everything's positive in quadrant one and quadrant three. <clears throat> then we look here and say, well, where's cosine negative? Well, cosine's positive in one and cosine's positive in four, so it'd have to be negative in two and three. So, okay. The only quadrant where tangent is positive yet cosine is negative is, looking here, is quadrant three. <clears throat> so theta is in quadrant three. <laughs> now let's look where secant is positive but sine is negative. Secant is positive in well secant's with cosine so four and one or you could say one four. <laughs> that is where secant's positive. Now sine is negative where is sine negative? Not quadrant one, it's positive there. Not quadrant two, it's positive there. It had to be quadrants three and four. <coughs> so three and four. And so what quadrant is secant positive but sine is negative? Quadrant four. So our angle theta in this case would be in four. Last exercise on this page. Where is cosecant positive? Cosecant and sine are related to each other. They're reciprocals. Well, sine's positive in two, so is cosecant. So cosecant's positive in quadrant one, quadrant two. So we have one, comma, two. Where is cotangent negative? <laughs> cotangent is negative in not one, not in three, it's positive there, it had to be two and four. What quadrant do they have in common? Where does our theta lie? Theta is in 
Check it out, quadrant two. Theta is in quadrant two here. <laughs> All right, so how about some more exercises here? <clears throat> These are a little bit different. They give me an angle theta and they're like, well, if sine theta is three over five and cosine theta is negative four fifths, find tan of theta and secant of theta. Well, how about we draw a picture? One of our favorite problem solving strategies. I'm gonna draw me a triangle with theta. <coughs> sine of theta is three fifths. Sine of theta is three over five. Opposite is three. Hypotenuse is five. So opposite is three. Hypotenuse is five. <clears throat> and then cosine of theta is four fifths. So adjacent is four, hypotenuse is five. I'm ignoring the negative sign for now. <clears throat> so now I have myself a triangle and I have me an angle theta and I can actually find tangent and secant of that angle. <clears throat> so let's first find tangent of theta. Opposite over adjacent. Opposite over adjacent. Three over four. <clears throat> now let's find secant of theta. The reciprocal of secant is cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, meaning secant would have to be hypotenuse over adjacent. So five over four. So five over four. Now we haven't determined if we're going to stay positive if these, or if these should be negative. And that's what we're going to do now. <clears throat> well, it all depends on what angle or what quadrant theta was in. So looking here, I have to answer the question, where is sine positive but cosine negative. <clears throat> so similar to what we did previously, sine is positive in one or two. <clears throat> cosine is negative in not one, not four, two or three. What quadrant do they have in common? Well, that would be quadrant two. So theta is in two. If that's the case, then in quadrant two, what is tangent? Is it positive or negative? Tangent is negative. If we're in quadrant two, what is secant? Secant is also negative. The only trig functions that are positive in quadrant two would be sine and cosecant. Everything else is negative. So go to each of our answers here and put the negative sign in front of them. And those are your answers. Secant's negative five over four. Tangent is negative three fourths. Since that one was so much fun, let's do another one. <laughs> Start off with a picture. So I start with a picture. I have my theta. Cosine is six over seven. I'm ignoring the negative for now. This is adjacent. This is hypotenuse. Adjacent is six, hypotenuse is seven. So go to your angle theta. Adjacent is six, hypotenuse is seven. <clears throat> so what goes here? <laughs> How do I figure that out? Well, the right angle might give it away, but yes, Pythagorean theorem is what we want to do. <clears throat> so you'll have six squared plus y squared equals seven squared. You'll have 36 plus y squared equals 49. Remember our goal here is to find y, so I'm gonna take away 36 from both sides. 
<coughs> so you get y squared equals, I believe that's going to give us y squared equals 13. y squared equals 13. <coughs> well, just take the square root of both sides and you'll get y equals the square root of 13. So I now know this other side here, this other leg is square root of 13. <clears throat> the ultimate goal will be finding sine of theta and cotangent of theta. So let me make a little bit of a note over here, sine theta, cotangent of theta. <clears throat> All right, so sine of theta, opposite over hypotenuse, square root of 13 over seven. I don't know if it's positive or negative yet. We'll find out in a second. Cotangent of theta. Cotangent is adjacent over opposite. So six square root, six over square root of 13. <clears throat> we'll rationalize this by multiplying by the square root of 13 over itself. This gives you six square roots of 13 over 13. Now, are these answers positive or negative? Well, what quadrant is theta in? Theta is in, if you want to write the degrees up here, 180 degrees and 270. What quadrant is between 180 degrees and 270? I believe that would have to be quadrant three. <clears throat> so if we're in quadrant three, that means only tangent and cotangent are positive. So cotangent is positive which would mean sine would have to be negative. So in my answers over here, sine, I need to throw the negative sign in front, and then cotangent can stay positive. So I have negative square root of 13 over seven, six square roots of 13 over 13. Now there's some other cool properties these trig functions have, and this falls back onto the symmetry of what these look like graphically. <clears throat> so you might remember even in odd functions from a previous class, just not when talking about trig functions. <clears throat> so an even function means it has y-axis symmetry. So a function is symmetric with respect to the y-axis if it's even. An odd function means it has symmetry with respect to the origin, also known as rotational symmetry. <clears throat> and what this means is, if you have a negative sign inside of a function, you're able to pull it out. That means that the function is odd. <clears throat> sign cosecant, tangent, and cotangent are all odd functions, meaning if you see a negative sign inside the function, you're allowed to pull it out front. So pretty cool property, and that's because once again, these functions graphs are symmetric with respect to the origin. They have rotational symmetry. <clears throat> Better yet there, the cosine and secant are called even functions. They're symmetric with respect to the y-axis. And what this means is that they can simply just, they eat the negative signs. It doesn't matter if you have a negative on the inside, you can remove it and they're still equal to each other. So these negative signs can be removed and it won't change the value of the trig function at all. <clears throat> Pretty neat. And this is gonna make our life easier as we work out a few more examples. Use even odd properties to find the value of the following. So the question is, if there's a negative sign on the inside, <clears throat> do we pull it out front or does it just disappear? And that goes to whatever function you're dealing with. Cosine is an even function. Cosine and secant are the only two even functions. They eat negative signs. So this is the same thing as saying cosine of pi over four. And we are professionals at this at this point because I can make my 45, 45, 90 triangle Label my sides, <clears throat> cosine, adjacent over hypotenuse. So I have one over square root of two. Rationalize, multiply by square root of two over itself. 
It looks like you'll get square root of 2 over 2 for your answer here. So these even odd properties are actually really helpful for us. Because literally cosine and secant, you can just remove the negative sign. <clears throat> Next example, tangent of negative 60 degrees. So we have to think, does tangent eat negative signs or does it bring them out front? And you have to remember tangent is odd. It's an odd function. So you can actually take this negative sign and bring it out front. <clears throat> so you'll have negative tangent of 60 degrees. And we know how to find tangent of 60 degrees. So I guess we'll draw a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Label your side relationships here. And I'm dealing with tangent of 60. Tangent of 60. So opposite over adjacent. Opposite over adjacent. Square root of 3 over 1. So the answer is just negative square root of 3. All right, so we'll do one more example together. <clears throat> Looks like I'm now dealing with cosecant. So the question is, what is cosecant, even or odd? Can I pull out the negative sign, or does it just disappear? And cosecant is actually an odd function. So let's bring out that negative sign. So I now have negative cosecant of 7 pi over 6. This is an angle that is a little bit more than pi. This angle is in quadrant 2. So we'll have a little bit of work to do here. <clears throat> Alright, so make a little note. That's so 7 pi over 6 is in quadrant 2. <clears throat> so I need to find the reference angle of this. And so we have to use our formulas from the previous video. The reference angle. If an angle is in, sorry, this should actually be quadrant three. If an angle is in quadrant three, to find the reference angle, you just subtract pi, which can be written as six pi over six. My reference angle is pi over 6. <clears throat> so in essence, I need to find cosecant of pi over 6. Which, by the way, remember that is, that is 30 degrees there. Guess we'll make a 30, 60, 90 triangle. All right, cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So this should be hypotenuse over opposite. So go to your 30 degree angle, hypotenuse over opposite, two over one, which is two. <clears throat> All right, so the deal is I was originally in quadrant three. What is cosecant in quadrant three? cosecant is negative in quadrant 3 because only tangent and cotangent are positive. So that means I have to make this 2 negative and put it up here in the top. Cosecant of 7 pi over 6, the negative sign carries from the front, but cosecant of 7 pi over 6 is actually negative 2. So negative 2 over 1 or negative 2, however you like to write it. Regardless, this ends up being just 2 in the end because the negative out front and the negative from the trig function do create a positive, a positive two. <clears throat> so I hope you've enjoyed looking at these different properties that trig functions have. <clears throat> there are also a few identities that trig functions have, and we've kind of discussed these a little bit. <clears throat> the first is the reciprocal identities, that cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. 
meaning cosecant is 1 over sine theta. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine, so secant theta is 1 over cosine theta. Cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, meaning cotangent theta is 1 over tangent theta. They are reciprocals of each other. <clears throat> then quotient identi identities, you have tan of theta is equal to sine over cosine, and then cotangent is cosine over sine. These are some really good identities to remember. So find the value of each expression. <clears throat> These are actually a little bit fun to do. Be careful because they can be a little bit addicting sometimes. So we know that secant, secant here is the reciprocal of cosine. So secant of 74 is actually 1 over cosine of 74 degrees. <clears throat> you multiply something by its reciprocal, the answer is just 1. Everything cancels out. So you can cross cancel diagonally here, and the answer is 1. <laughs> Next, cosecant of pi over 6 times sine of pi over 6. Well, we already know that cosecant is 1 over sine. We keep the angle inside the same. So it looks like we're taking sine and multiplying by its reciprocal. Once again, you have this nice cancellation here, and the answer is 1. <coughs> uh, what about part C? This one might be a little bit more involved than what we did previously. <clears throat> so there's a few things you can do here. Well, a lot of things you can do here. <clears throat> the first thing is... I'm going to try and get the same angle inside each of these trig functions. <clears throat> so I have cotangent here. I have cosine over sine. I'm thinking that maybe we can combine this eventually and turn this into cotangent. <clears throat> so first off, let me take cotangent and subtract 180 degrees from it, because remember, cotangent repeats itself every 180 degrees. Alright, now... The deal is I'm trying to get 39 in all of these. <clears throat> well, what can I do here to this lovely sine? Well, remember, sine repeats itself every 360 degrees. So how about we add 360 degrees to that inside angle? Okay. We almost have positive 39 degrees in every single angle. Well, what can we do with negative signs inside sine functions? We can pull them out front. So because sine is odd, once again, because sine is odd, I can pull that negative sign out front of the sine function. <clears throat> now, Keep the negative sign, cosine over sine, and it's the same angle on the inside. Cosine over sine is actually cotangent. So negative cotangent of 39 degrees plus cotangent 39 degrees is actually a big fat zero. Alright, and that's all we have for you today, so I hope you enjoyed and that you appreciate the properties and identities that we have. Thank you for watching.